Now let's proceed with creation of the disaster recovery protection groups, and then we will associate them with each other. Uh, after that, we will add members uh, to these protection groups. At this stage, we have a fully configured EPM system running in the primary London region. In addition, we have completed prerequisites for FSDR by setting up block volume groups with cross-region replication and enabling cross-region data guard replication on the primary database. So in OCI console, we go to disaster recovery protection groups screen and we can now create a new uh, protection group in the primary UK South uh, London region. So let's click on create, give it a meaningful name. Let's call it PM FSDR London. It will be in uh, our test EPM system compartment. Now we have to select the object storage bucket that will be used by this group. So let's use this one. Uh, and at this point, we do not configure the role. It will be configured after we have created the second protection group in the standby region. So click on create. So while this group is being created in London region, we can proceed to UK West Newport region, the standby region, and create group here as well. So click on create the R protection group, EPM as the R. This time we will name it new for Newport region. Again, the same compartment we use as in the primary region. Uh, object storage bucket, there is a separate bucket in, in the Newport region for this group. Uh, and again, we leave the role not configured at this stage and click on create. Once the protection groups are created and are in active state, we can associate them. So let's click on associate button, select the role. So we are in the primary London region, so this will be our primary group. The peer region for London will be UK West in Newport. And we will select the existing DR protection group in Newport region and click on associate. The association is now completed. We can see the uh, protection group is in the active state. And now we can see also that the role of the group has been updated. So in UK West Newport region, we have the standby role uh, assigned to the protection group. And if we go and have a look at UK South London in the primary region, the role of the group is primary. So now we can proceed with adding members to both protection groups. Let's start with the London, uh, the primary uh, side, Let's add member and the resource type will be first database. Uh, we have to acknowledge the warning that if there are any uh, existing plans, they will be uh, deleted after adding new members. We have to select the right database in our EPM system compartment. We have only one database uh, used by our EPM system uh, and we have to specify the password for this database in the uh, vault in OCI. Now we can click on add. Now that we have added the database, we can continue adding uh, the remaining members for the uh, protection group. So let's go with compute node. And the, there is only one instance in our EPM system compartment. So this is the uh, EPM system application instance. And the type of this instance will be a moving instance. So it will be moved from the primary region to the standby region. Let's add the network card mapping. Destination subnet, add destination private IP address, which will uh, simplify switching over and mapping host names. Uh, after the host is moved to the target uh, network. Now let's add volume group. 
So in our APM system compartment, we have the volume group with uh, all the boot volumes and block volumes uh, for the EPM system. Now the last member we will be adding to the protection group is the load balancer. So we are selecting first the existing load balancer for EPM system in the primary region. And then we access, we select the standby load balancer in the new port region. And we will be replicating the source backend set to the destination packet set. Now we have added all required members for the EPM system in the primary region and we can move to Newport region and add members uh, here. So let's go to members, add member. We're going to add the database, which has been created by the data guard from the primary database. So it is a FSDR standby database, RPM. And the same way as in the primary region, we select the database system in the system uh, password in the vault and click on that. After the database, we will be adding load balancer. So again, we select load balancer. In Newport region, this is the load balancer that exists there, and it will be paired with the London load balancer. We select source and destination packet sets and click on that. Now we have all the members in the standby group. Since we are using a moving compute instance, at this moment we don't have any compute resources in the standby region. They will be created here during the switchover from the primary region. Now we can continue to create plans. So first let's create a switchover plan. So it will be a switch over to new port. So we are always creating plans from the standby region. So currently UK West new port is the standby region. Select plan, switch over. So now we have created a switch over plan, uh, which is automatically populated by FSDR based on the members uh, included in the protection groups. So the next step is adding custom steps, user-defined steps uh, to complete our, our switch over plan. So let's add a custom group. So first we will add uh, custom scripts to stop the uh, application services before we stop the compute node. So let's select group name, uh, we can call it custom scripts before shutdown, for example. And we want to add this group before the step to stop compute instances. So they will be executed before stopping the compute instance. Now we add the step and we specify the script. So script to stop EPM services. And now all the scripts are located on the actual application compute node. So we have to point to this compute node, which currently is located in London region. It will be run local script. We have to select on which compute instance those scripts are located and script parameters. So script parameters, in this case, those are Windows scripts and we can add optionally run as a user is for Linux scripts. Now error mode, we have options stop on error, continue on error. Well, let's leave stop on error and timeout uh, 3,600 seconds is uh, a little bit long. Let's uh, maybe reduce it to 600 seconds. And add step. So we can see this plan group 
that is supposed to be executed before instance shutdown has one step, which is to stop the EPM services. We click on add. So now our switchover plan has been updated. And as you can see, uh, the custom scripts before shutdown have been added before the stop compute instance. Now let's add one more custom group. So after startup, so after starting the compute instance in the standby region, and we're going to add it after launch compute instance step. And again, first we want to update the host file to map the new IP addresses in the standby region with the original host name, uh, host names of the uh, application servers and the database server. Uh, we select again the compute node which currently hosts all those scripts. So currently this is London run local script. And the script parameter will be again for our PowerShell Windows script. We use the timeout of 600 seconds. Add step. And we can add multiple scripts to be executed within the plan group. We will add one more step, which will be to start the services. So script to start the EPM services. And again, slightly shorter timeout script, add step. So now with two added user defined groups in our switchover plan, uh, we have a complete plan which will uh, stop all the services of the EPM system in the primary region, then move the resources to the standby region and restart the application. So now we can go ahead and run the pre-checks. So preliminary checks uh, for all the steps uh, in the plan. Now that pre-checks have completed, they usually take about a couple of minutes, as you can see here. In this case, uh, two minutes, 21 seconds, uh, all pre-checks succeeded. So now we can proceed and actually execute the uh, switch over plan. Let's go to plans, switch over to new pod. So we will be moving our EPM instance uh, from London to new pod. We can click on execute the plan. Since we have just executed the pre-checks, we can disable them, uh, give the plan a name. And click on execute the upload. And here we can follow the progress all the tasks uh, in the switchover plan. After the switchover plan completes, we can review the results. So as we can, you can see, the plan completed successfully. Uh, it took uh, just over 24 minutes to complete the switchover database and application layer uh, and load balancer from London region to Newport. Uh, as well as executing our uh, custom built-in scripts. After the switchover, if we look at the disaster recovery groups, now the disaster recovery protection group in the Newport region becomes the primary group. Previously, it was the standby group. And if we look at London, uh, our protection group in London is now a standby group. Uh, and if we look at members in London, previously we had four members. Uh, now we have only two members, uh, same way as, as it was previously in standby Newport region. So after testing application, if everything uh, works after the switchover, we can now test 
a failover plan to move the application back from Newport region to London. The failover and switchover plans can only be created in the standby region. So this time we go to London region, which is now standby region. Uh, in our protection group, we're going to plans and create a plan. Uh, this time it will be failover to London. And we select failover, which is an unplanned type of uh, uh, switch from primary to standby region. And we click on create. So now we have created a failover plan to move the APM application back to London. Uh, as you can see, the failover plan is uh, shorter compared to the switchover uh, because the assumption is that the primary region is not available. So any steps that would be normally executed in the primary region are uh, omitted here. Uh, so similar to uh, our setup in the switchover plan previously, we will add a custom step. So we're going to run custom scripts after starting up the uh, application compute node. So we're going to add these steps after launching the compute instance. And again, we're going to add a first script to update the host file. This script will revert the changes done in the host file uh, in the Newport region. So we will uh, come back to the original host file uh, from the London region. And we're going to reduce the timeout and add the step. And the next step we will add as starting the APM service. So we are selecting here the compute node where it currently is. So currently the application node with the scripts on it uh, is located in Newport region. And again, reducing the timeout. That step and after adding a user defined plan group, we can run the pre checks. Once the pre checks are completed, we can proceed to execute the failover to London. Our failover plan to London has completed successfully, uh, including the user-defined scripts to be launched after uh, switch back to London. Uh, if we look at our uh, disaster recovery pro protection groups, uh, the protection group in London is now back to primary role. So this is our primary region in London. And if we look at UK Newport, the role of the protection group changed back to standby. This will conclude our full stack disaster recovery tutorial for Hyperion on OCI. Uh, I have demonstrated a successful switchover of uh, Hyperion application from the primary region in London to Newport. And then we have used a failover plan to move back the EPM system from Newport region to London. Thank you for watching.